FBI cases involve crimes committed by cyber criminals, bank robbers, gangs, cartels, and kidnappers, to name but a few. It also lists unsolved cases of people who have mysteriously disappeared and who have still not been found. Some of these scary mysteries have gone without explanation for decades, but the cases remain open and are still under investigation in the hopes that they will one day be solved. Number 5. The FBI case involving Caitlin Akins, a 19-year-old woman from Arizona, started in December of 2015 when she was visiting her mother, Lisa Sullivan, and her sister, Gabriella, in Spotsylvania County, Virginia. She had arrived in Virginia on the 1st to meet Gabriella's new baby and to collect her high school diploma, which she needed to start a cosmetology course in Arizona on the 7th. She had booked a flight to return home on the 5th at 5.40 p.m., but Lisa couldn't drop her off at the airport as she had to work, and so she arranged for her ex-husband, James Branton, to take her instead. Lisa dropped Caitlin at Branton's house at 9.20 a.m. and left for work shortly after. At 1.52 a.m., Branton texted Lisa to tell her that she had dropped Caitlin off at the mall at 1 p.m., as she wanted to look around for a while instead of waiting at the airport. The mall was next to a metro station, and he said that she would take the metro from the mall to the airport. At 2 p.m., she received a text from Caitlin's phone that read, quote, I'm at the airport, battery dying so won't be able to text for a bit. Caitlin's girlfriend, Amber, tried to contact her after she'd received a message from her saying that something came up and she wasn't heading home that day. At 7.15, Lisa received another message from Caitlin, saying that she was staying with a friend and that she needed some time alone. When she didn't respond to any calls or text, Lisa became worried and reported her as missing. Two days later, Caitlin's luggage was found in a drainage ditch near the Fredericksburg city limits, 50 miles from the airport. The luggage was scuffed and had a wheel that had broken off leading investigators to believe that it had been thrown from a moving vehicle. Her cell phone and high school diploma were missing. Surveillance footage from the mall and metro station showed no sign of her or Brandon's vehicle, and although he was cooperative at first, he refused a polygraph test and has since refused to cooperate. His encrypted cell phone was seized by investigators, but he has also refused to supply them with a the password. Caitlin's disappearance remains an unsolved mystery. Anyone with information can contact the FBI at 804-261-1044 or fbi.gov slash tips. Number 4. A $5,000 reward is being offered by the FBI for any information leading to the whereabouts of Sarah Burton, a 28-year-old woman from Joplin, Missouri who mysteriously disappeared on the 16th of July, 2018. Early that morning, Sarah was dropped off by a friend, and initially it was believed that this was the last time that she was seen. But another sighting was reported at the 100 block of North Pearl Avenue that same morning. Her parents, Ron and Stephanie Burton, last saw her on the 8th of July, when they gifted her with a new SUV to replace a car that she had wrecked earlier in the year. They would later learn that she had crashed the new vehicle in Pittsburgh just three days later. In April of 2019, a property in Newton County, southwest of Joplin, was being searched in an unrelated matter when investigators received a tip that the same property may have a connection to Sarah's case. Missouri State Highway Patrol divers and the FBI crime lab technicians were called in to aid in the search and Sheriff Chris Jennings stated afterward that something had been found that matched with the tip that they had received, but he declined to say what it was, except that it was not any of her belongings that had been found. The Newton County Sheriff's Department has received numerous tips on the case, and they have all been investigated, but Sarah has never been found and her fate remains unknown. Investigators have asked anyone with information on Sarah's disappearance to contact the Joplin Police Department at 417-623-3131, extension 440. Number 3. 
In 2006, Ryan Tchaikovsky was teaching English in China when he decided to take a vacation in Laos. His parents, David and Judy, were getting ready to meet him in Hong Kong, and it would be the first time that they had seen him since he left the US. But before they could leave, they received some distressing news. They were contacted by the US Embassy in Laos and were told that Ryan was missing. He had been staying at a guest house and his belongings were still in his room, but he hadn't been back for two weeks. David and Judy immediately left their house on Lopez Island and flew to Laos to look for him. Here, they were told that Ryan had planned on traveling down the river with two other people on the 14th of March, and on the 13th, the guest house owner spotted Ryan as he left his room, carrying his camera. The next morning, his travel partners knocked on his room door, but he hadn't returned, and on the 7th of April, his camera, room key, and Western Volleyball jersey were found 2.5 miles north of Zhangkok. Despite the fact that it had been heavily raining for weeks, the camera wasn't waterlogged, the room key wasn't rusted, and his jersey was clean. This led investigators to believe that the items had been placed there recently. The Aka tribes people are known to regularly scour the riverbank for shells and other treasures. And since they didn't find Ryan's belongings until the 7th, it's assumed that they were kept inside out of the rain before being placed on the riverbank. When the guest house owner was asked why he hadn't reported Ryan missing sooner, he stated that he thought Ryan may have decided to explore the surrounding hills for a few days, and that he had just decided to abandon his possessions. David and Judy have offered a $5,000 reward for any information on what happened to him, and have printed flyers for distribution overseas. They also keep in regular contact with the US Embassy in Laos in case there are any developments in the case. They have also used images retrieved from his camera's memory card to visit some of the villages that he traveled through, but they found that many of the residents are hesitant to talk to them. Despite their best efforts, Ryan has not been found, and the FBI has asked anyone with information to contact their local FBI office or the nearest U.S. Embassy. Number 2 The strange case of 31-year-old William Smolinski better known as Billy, has been investigated by the FBI. The Waterbury Police Department, the Shelton Police Department, the Seymour Police Department, and the Connecticut State Police since his mysterious disappearance from his home in Waterbury, Connecticut on the 24th of August, 2004. On that day, Billy went to his neighbor's house and asked if he could look after his German Shepherd since he was traveling north to look at a car that he was interested in buying. When the neighbor went to his house to check on the dog the following morning, he found that the house was locked with the dog inside. He noticed that Billy's pickup truck was still parked outside, and he contacted police. When his vehicle was searched, his wallet and keys were found inside, tucked under the driver's seat. They later learned that Billy had visited with his ex-girlfriend, Madeline Gleason, that morning, and she stated that he seemed slightly depressed when he left her house. Billy's phone records showed that he had made three calls to a man named Chris Sorensen, who he believed was dating Madeline. Sorensen told police that he had received a call from a man who told him to watch his back, and it was later found out that it was indeed Billy who had threatened him. Receipts found inside Billy's home showed that he had visited a Burger King at around 3 p.m., where he ordered two hamburgers and fries. He deposited his last paycheck into his bank account before mysteriously disappearing, and the account has not seen any activity since. Two years later, police received a tip about a man named Sean Karpiuk, Madeline's son. They were told that Karpiuk had ended Billy's life because he had assaulted her. The tipster stated that Karpiuk and another man then disposed of Billy in a spot that was then covered with concrete. Karpiuk had passed away in 2005, and so it remained speculation. In 2008, a man named Chad Hansen told police that he knew where Billy was buried and that he had helped Karpiuk dispose of him. Searches were carried out in Seymour, Connecticut in 2008, and a state forest in 2010, and Oxford, Connecticut in 2011, but to no avail. Later in 2011, 
Hansen pled guilty to charges of making false statements and interfering with a police investigation, and it's believed that he did so to try to derail the investigation. He was sentenced to four and a half years in prison, but is still a person of interest in Billy's disappearance. Billy has never been found, and anyone with information on his case is asked to contact the New Haven FBI office at 203-777-6311. Number 1 In March of 1998, 19-year-old Suzanne Lyall from Albany, New York was working at a computer company in Troy and at the Babbage's Software Company in Westmere Gilderland to supplement her studies at the State University of New York. On the 1st of March, she phoned her mother and complained that she was low on cash as she hadn't received her paycheck. Her mother offered to lend her some money, but she declined. The next day, Suzanne sat at a midterm exam and attended classes until 4 p.m., after which she left her shift at Babbage's. She left work at about 9.20 p.m. after the store had closed and boarded a bus back to her dorm room. A classmate saw her getting off the bus on the campus at around 9.45, from where she only needed to walk for about three minutes before reaching her dorm. But she never made it there and she remains missing to this day. When her boyfriend, Richard Condon, realized she was missing, he phoned Suzanne's parents and informed them that she was nowhere to be found. They contacted campus police but were told not to worry as she would probably return soon. The following day, Suzanne's ATM card was used at around 4 p.m. to withdraw $20 from an ATM in Albany. Investigators were unable to determine whether it was her who had withdrawn the money as the ATM wasn't covered by security cameras. But Condon told them that he and Suzanne were the only people who knew her pin. He was considered a suspect, but his alibi was confirmed by a friend who told investigators that they'd been playing video games at the time of her disappearance. However, Condon refused to take a polygraph test and wouldn't corroborate without a lawyer present. It was later revealed that Suzanne had told a coworker the previous month that she thought she was being stalked by an unknown person. But no further evidence was ever found, and her mysterious disappearance remains unsolved. If you have any information, you're asked to contact the New York State Police on 519-783-3211. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But I've been Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.